Welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and also everybody over there on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for some Bant tokens. So basically this is like a Selesnya tokens deck that's just splashing blue a little bit for a quality removal spell with Deputy of Detention and also just Dovin Grand Arbiter that can make some tokens as well. That's basically what we got with our, our blue mana over here. Um, both of them work really well with Hero of Precinct 1, so we're basically playing a, a banned Hero of Precinct 1 deck um, also. And the other thing the blue gives us is some counter spells in the sideboard as well. Plus we got a Teferi in the sideboard for uh, the control matchup if we need this uh, just you know really versatile, really good Planeswalker. We got one copy over there. Um, yeah, this deck could use Krasis. Yeah, we we could have Krasis. The thing is, is we don't we don't have too many lands. We got 22 lands over here. We got four flowers also to help us out. Um, I've played the deck with 21 lands, but you can, you know you can certainly get stuck quite a bit on the 21 lands. And if we're trying to actually cast Tristanis or Flourish, I kind of like the 22 land more. Um, but yeah, we're trying to go wide. Our the core of the deck is the two drops. Hero, Tithe Taker, Amara, Shauna. That's the core of our deck. Uh, start getting those things out. Uh, convoke some Luxodon, some Tribunals, March of the Multitudes. Get our Convoke spells. Go really wide very quickly and kill the opponent. That's our plan. So let's give it a try. Let's use the Selesnya sleeves. I don't like Dawn of Hope in this kind of deck. Dawn of Hope's just really slow and the the best matchup for Dawn of Hope is Esper Control and they're playing Mortify. I don't like that card. Legion's Landing could certainly be in the deck. The thing is we're, we are trying to maximize uh, Hero of Precinct 1 also, so we're trying to play many multicolor spells. But yeah, Legion's Landing could certainly be in the deck. Hey, it's up, Zerf. Having a good Easter stream. I'm a little tired after yesterday's 12-hour sub-battle day. That was a lot of fun, though. We got good mana already. Let's get rid of this flower, see if we can find a 2-drop. This deck's not usually about trying to get a, very much, you know, it's not it's not usually built trying to get a lot of mana, which is why uh, we, we're not playing like Krasis. Krasis is really good when you want to play a real long game and, and have a lot of mana, and that's not what this deck is. I'll make an exception for you. Um, that's not, like, the desire of this deck. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get, didn't get to play against you yesterday, Zerf, but that's cool. You had an, an extra birthday party. Very nice. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Sooner or later. <laughs> I guess they, they didn't like that 1-1 one, one creature. <laughs> they didn't like that token. They're looking at these cards, and they're like, ugh, those cards aren't even good. I have to take one. I'm jealous. Hmm. Of course, we're minusing. I benefit from another's success. I just want to play this deputy. Yeah. Deputy's pretty bad in this matchup against Esper Control here. This is just not not necessarily a very good hand against Esper Control. Because if we if we take anything against against Esper Control, it's likely, you know, Teferi. They have just so much removal. They're gonna kill my creature. It's just a 1-3. They're going to kill it. So I'm getting the deputy in play here so that next turn when we plus Dovin, we have two creatures that we are attacking in with. Not just a gadget, but ingenuity. We really don't want to keep drawing lands, but... Uh, 
Such is life. Well, at least we don't have any good cards. Don't expect to win this one, but hopefully after sideboarding we get to bring in a bunch of counter spells. We can bring in a couple, like we bring in like Teferi. Oh my gosh, that's not a good, not a good card to draw. I should have ticked up Dovin. I guess I'm taking down Dovin now. I should have ticked up Dovin. I was inspired by a good assault. But this could, uh, three three creatures out could certainly. Uh, have my opponent want to play a Kaya's Wrath now, so I'm not going to play a fourth creature. So there's 22 lands in the deck. We got six of them already in 12 cards. These results are an anomaly, not to be repeated. And so seven of them in 13 cards. We got one flower at the bottom of the library with our with our scry after a mulligan. So basically what I'm saying is hopefully we start drawing a bunch of gas now. And yeah, the, the tick down Dovin worked out. Not surprising there's another cast down since one was used very liberally earlier. Keep I can no longer stand by and watch. <laughs> Playing against the tokens deck and just doesn't even care for Kaisra. Uncalled for. Okay. You know what? I'm not done. Don't yet. expect to be winning this game. But I've been saying that for a long time. Yeah, I like I like our post sideboard matchup. At least. Yeah, Teferi's the best plane talker in standard right now. And just has, like, just Esper in, in, in general is just a really powerful deck. Very. No time for a break. Yeah, it's just a really good deck. It's full of good cards. So that's why you see, that's why you see uh, Teferi so much. The opponent's playing Esper Control. That's the name of it. Esper refers to the colors of the deck, white, blue, and black. And it is a control deck. Hmm. Gotta play one other of these cards. I guess Knight of Autumn. And let's play another Knight of Autumn. Let's play more Night of Autumn over these Shaunas, actually. Alright, there we go.
Predictions for War's best colors? Well, certainly blue. Definitely blue. Um, blue's already the best color in standard, and I don't see that changing at all. <clears throat> There are just so many different blue decks. Blue is just, blue is just kind of everywhere, in standard these days. You know whether it's, you know anything from, is it Drake's to Esper Control. What's the best deck against Esper? Um, I. Th I think Gruel Aggro is pretty good against Esper. Whether it's the, the best or not. All right, so getting an extra land out of the deck. You know, going going ahead and starting to thin the deck right away. First turn. Yeah, mono blue usually does pretty good as well against Esper. This is Bant. Yep. Green, white, blue is Bant. I don't want to play a Tithe Taker, then my opponent play a Cry of the Carnarium. We saw Cry last game. I am not countering an Absorb here. I didn't want to like play my land first and like give my opponent the impression that I had the land kind of thing. But I could see them just letting that resolve because of Cry the Carnarium, trying to cry here, and then I have Negate. And then we draw a land and we untap into Fairy. So close. So close to drawing a land there. And uh, with Kaya's Wrath already required, no reason to play a Knight of Autumn, but now after the Kaya's Wrath, we get to resolve to Fairy. Tithe take her back. Heal. I want the. I want to cast flower. I want the um, afterlife creature more than Amara at this point. I think I do want to cast the flower.
So we actually attack for more if we sack the tithe, tithe taker. So we can tick up and attack for four of these things. Attack for six. Look how far you have come. gonna blow up this Elves Reborn, not have to discard any of these cards, and not play more into sweepers. Trying to get as much as we can out of all of our cards. that we can out of these guards. Hey, Tristani was not lethal. They had a removal spell. Um, after the removal spell, it was not lethal anymore. I, I, I checked him with the Ajani, you know, like, whenever I Ajani minus the Tithe Taker, they have to ca cast cast down, because then, you know, the, the Tithe Taker, um, at that point, um, you know, would mean that they couldn't cast cast down anymore. So if they didn't play a cast down and they were just going to take that damage, then I could Tristani. But they, they definitely had another removal spell, because otherwise they were even just dead to an Ajani tick up. Good, Emmanuel. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, glad you enjoyed that review. Yeah, so if y'all don't know about it, uh, Friday, Saturday, we spent uh, 11 and a half hours going over all of the cards in War of the Spark, talking about how can we use them in Standard. Uh, so did an entire set review in, on Standard. You can find the videos there on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ToddStevensMTG. If there's, you know, you can watch all of it, or if there's any specific cards that you like that you want to hear us talking about them? Check that out there. Let's get another land out of here. Okay. Hey, good luck, Surf. So been a lot, you know, on the play we get to play the Amara and we get to untap with it. Do we actually untap with it on the draw? Not very likely. But on the play we would have been able to untap with it. Ooh, we did get to untap with it. When will people learn that they don't need to actually play their spell at instant speed just because it says instant on it? So, lesson for y'all in chat. Just because your spell says the word instant on it, you don't actually have to cast it at instant speed. You can you can cast it on your own turn. Yeah, mask. That's I'm I didn't uh I didn't really like write write them down too much this last time. Yeah, let's play this. But I am planning on, uh, whenever I have a little more time, um, next couple of days, I am planning on going through the... <clears throat> I am planning on going through the YouTube videos and going back over them and, and 
copy pasting a big list of all the cards and then writing down the letter grade on all the cards so we can have that. Um, and then they'll be good to discuss like for our next set and everything. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Basically, the biggest problem with not playing Tristani is Cry of the Carnarium. I really hope they have Kaya's Wrath and not Cry of the Carnarium. Okay, good. Um, if you had to give War of the Spark a single overall grade, what would that be? Um, yeah, I probably, like, maybe like an A. I am not going to sit this one out. Probably really high. I know, I know, like, my letter grades aren't, weren't necessarily A's or B's on, like, all the cards because... On the rating scale, like, the A's and B's were, like, really good cards. And so, yeah, a lot of my ratings were C's, but there were just so many of those. All right, so if this, re if this resolves, we can attack them for lethal. If it gets countered, which it should, because they just cast Absorb. Or, sorry, they just shocked in, so they're going to have Absorb here. And it gets countered, then we just kill Teferi. So we basically get to, you know, we get to check, are we attacking you or Teferi? So that gets Absorbed. Get rid of Teferi. You just let me know if you're up. So two Teferis are down. Now. I The question is, do you do you believe Dovin's Veto will push the format to more mid-range decks? I don't think so. I mean Dovin's Veto is gonna be a big part of the format, but I mean I guess it it could push towards more creature decks, but the thing is, the removal in standard these days is ridiculously good. And it's getting better. Like, at least, like, four mana sweepers, everything. It, it's pretty tough on creatures these days. Removal spells are just awesome. And the card draw is incredible. We need to stop drawing these lands. It's a few, a few land draws in a row there. So many lands. We're playing 22 lands. We're not playing very many lands. So we've gone through nine lands and two flowers. Go, Nato, I'm go. An elephant. Ah! Yeah, somebody says control is going to be really good next week, unless it's not. Yeah, it may not be. Usually it takes a little bit for control to be really good. You know, usually you just kind of find out like what the other 
what are like the constraints on the format? What are like the threats that people are playing? And you, what are like the good answers to those things? And you go from there. So good, good, uh, good second game, good third game there. The, the killer there was the first game where we really drew terrible and just every, like, we had so many cards, like, we just had lands and the cards that were really bad against Esper that we were boarding out. Like, those were the only cards we had. Uh, but good close games there, those other two. Just didn't work our, didn't turn out to be our game, Drew. A little bit too many lands. I like the Amara into Dovin curve. I forgot about Dovin being in our deck. That was our one card that we had game one. We had a Dovin and, and nothing else. All right, Watery Grave. Looks like another Esper deck. Our Demir discard deck was pretty good against control decks. Ooh. Free booter. Hey, we have four of this card. We didn't see a single one of these the entire match against Esper. We have four of that card. Forgot about that one. Yeah, that is a very good point. With War of the Spark, you don't have to worry about any any more shock lands, any more dual lands in the rare slot to <clears throat> for you to use your, on your rare wild cards. You just get to use them all on um, the cards you want. <laughs> We're playing against my Esper Duplicate deck again. Oh, I think this is the same. Is this the same person we played against earlier? It could be. Second time we've played against my Esper duplicate deck today. There's no accounting from another success. Maybe yours will hold. <clears throat> so we have a, we have a second Amara. So I think we can double block. This outcome surprises even me. That's a good one. One token away from Luxodon for now. <clears throat> no, you still need Shocklands and everything. I'm Sorry, what I was saying is that War of the Spark in the set does not have any rare lands. So if you're just using your wild cards on new cards from, wild, from War of the Spark, you don't have to worry about any rare lands to use your wild cards on. They're still definitely in standard and you still want them and everything like that. There are there are a few rare colorless lands that are good. That is true. A couple of those.
All right, so flower makes it makes a token and gets us a land. I'm gonna just march main phase here. So I can march for five, make six tokens. Hostage Taker. Hostage Taker on Venerated Luxon is pretty cool because they can cast the Venerated Luxon right now if they want. If they want to tap all their things. You, you don't really need a shock for it. I don't play against my own decks very often. Played against playing against this one twice today. That's pretty cool. Make all these things 3 3 life leakers. Draw land. You draw land, we draw Tristani. 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 Close. Alright, does this attack even make sense? So. The two elephants bounce off each other. Hero gets eaten up. They chump block Shauna. And that means they have three other things and they can just eat one, three, three. Eat a one, one, and a one, one. And they would take 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. They don't get to just eat all of those. So, yes, this attack, this attack's going to make sense. <laughs> so they can eat two three threes in the two two, but then they have to trump Luxodon and Shauna. Why are they having the three four block? The 13 13 and not one of the two threes. What? What? What kind of block is that? So they, they should still have the hostage shaker alive at least. You know, with the exact same damage, they could just have the hostage shaker alive as a 3 4 still. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that really matters. You know, they have to like draw another deputy attention. But if they draw a deputy attention, maybe it matters. It's a weird matchup. Well, I definitely want all these baffling ends. Af absolutely want baffling ends. Um, I think I want Disdainful Stroke as well, because Hostage Taker and Chupacabra and Seraph of the Scales. My own Deputy Detention doesn't seem too great. The best the best thing Deputy does is get rid of the, like, the tokens that my opponent has. But the fact that they're playing Deputy, Hostage Taker, and Chupacabra means that my deputy is not long for this world, so it's not like a... It's it's going to die, is basically what I'm saying. So it's not it's not reliable. I think I want Tribunal instead. It's a lot more reliable. You know, Tribunal does get swept up by Deputy of Detention. Maybe not. We're bringing the Baffling Ends. Maybe we don't need that.
The Disdainful Stroke's kind of random. I could just have Third Tribunal instead, but I like this Disdainful Stroke. <clears throat> I don't think I need the Lyra. I'm worried about Lyra against Hostage Shaker. And it's pretty weak to Chupacabra. But I am definitely worried about them stealing it and just having their own Lyra and me not being able to beat a Lyra. I'm just going to keep this land. I need to get to this Tristani. If I don't play any creatures, can't Chupacabra them or kill them or anything. If don't play any. Tithe Taker definitely makes Disdainful Stroke worse. I wasn't really considering Tithe Taker. Tribunal one of these. Nah. So a little worried about, um, you know, going for like March of the Multitudes, and like I could March of the Multitudes and then Luxodon. A little worried about Deputy of Detention though, in that case. We have drawn a lot of lands with this deck today. 22 land deck. Oh, we just didn't draw too well with Junt. Didn't really ever curve out or anything. And speaking of Junt, I'm finishing up getting that, that video up on YouTube. It's looking like they didn't have the deputy, and it's looking like I'm probably going to lose this because I didn't march and then Luxodon earlier. It's looking like I need to do that. So I was too patient. Marsh. 
Thank you so much for that reset, Marsh. Alright, let's gain some life. Uh, get this Chupacabra out of here so they can't quasi-duplicate the Chupacabra. Well, that's sub number 8 on the day. I was behind one. Alright. Get that thing out of here, and let's get some attacking in. They want to block with their tithe takers, get some other 1-1s. One -one. That's, that's okay, that happens. We're not in the worst position anymore, though. We can't really beat other Seraph of the Scales. We'll draw Tristani. We got three Tristanis. Sean is kind of like our, our best card here. Can't be the target of abilities. All their stuff's abilities. Looks like they targeted the Shauna first. Uh, no. Magic the Gathering's been the game I've been playing for years. I haven't played. Uh, I haven't really played other card games. Yeah, you can get the Demir discard list here. Oh, uh, we had a Tristani earlier. That's right, I got chooped. I am proud to fight by your side. Be strong. Yeah, how do you have time for other card games? I don't know. There's so many sweet decks to play. Tristani. Tristani. Come on, Jack. We need a Tristani. Give us our creatures back. Oh no, this is going to kill Ashana. No, bad block. Bad block. It's going to kill Ashana. Yeah, I should have... That was just a bad block. Now that just kills everything. Cease this. That was just... I just... That was just a bad block. Let's go to the next game. <laughs> we don't have any Grad the Carnariums. Nope. None of those. They just played a Mortify. Ugh. Actually, Teferi's probably pretty good here. We play it's a fairy. I'll play that over a Dovin. We've been drawing so many lands that it seems like it's not not a problem at all casting Teferi, but that's usually a problem in this deck. 
Yeah, like this. This is not a deck that plays very many lands. This is more like it. Harpooner for Seraph is a is a terrible trade for us. We kill their creature and they get two one ones. Blech, yuck. I want to bring in Harpooner for Seraph. They do have Thief, though. We could have Harpooner for Thief. If I just had one more land. And it looks like we're mulliganing again. This is this has been our last two leagues. <laughs> this has been exactly what our last two leagues have been. I mean, this was the the last game too, right? Like we had, we didn't have any mana. We mulliganed, and we just kept a bunch of lands and a Tristani. This is the same thing. Ugh. The old no no land all land kind of thing. Get a spell. Come on. This has been a very frustrating four matches in a row. Not much I can do though. Okay, so I mean I could go to five. Could go to five cards against the the two for one deck. And try to expect five cards to beat it. You do not have to fight alone. Strength is born of struggle. Oh well, at least at least my deck still won. <laughs> we did. Our deck still won. I mean, I love that curve. Tithesaker, Midnight Reaper, a Johnny. Can't tell you how many times I've done that. I will lend you my strength. Maybe we draw like a, a March of the Multitudes so we can have a, a large mar March of the Multitudes. You should be proud to have come to you are capable of more than you assume. Well, I'm glad they didn't keep negate. That was gonna be a card that we wouldn't really be able to beat. That gives us out still. So that's good. But obviously, Conclave Tribunal is like what we Deliver need to be drawing to here. Because this Ajani is going to ultimate. Can't negate the lands. So true. So true. Wow, these last four games have been rough. Last four matches. All right, a couple quick leagues. <laughs> he had the opposite reaction. 
since they got rid of negate they obviously have another one that could have been that could have been the thing as well um i mean the one thing i can say is that so we the last few times i've played this deck has been during our sub battle streams and it's felt pretty good uh the one thing i can say though is i I was, you know, just getting... I was playing 21 lands in this deck, and I was getting just stuck on lands quite a bit. And I thought, what if we just put a 22nd in here? And so that's why we got this Hinterland Harbor in here as, like, a 22nd land. Um, and as you saw with those those games after those mulligans... Um, uh, obviously, it looked like having a, another land was not a good idea. Because we just had so many lands. Usually this, this deck would like really struggle to try to cast Tristani at 5 mana. And those games, Tristani was just our first play. <laughs> Each of those last couple of plays, basically. Ugh. That's how magic goes sometimes. That's magic. Alright, well, another real short video. Um, but if you're watching some band tokens later on on YouTube, um, hope you learned something. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe you liked the deck, maybe you didn't. Maybe you liked our opponent's Esper Duplicate deck. That was pretty cool. Um, but there we go. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.